Hello, this is Raynette, um, your, present, uh, your presenter today, and to talking about medical food nutrition insurance coverage for homocystinaria. For this presentation, we're just talking about insurance coverage for um, HCU and homocystinaria patients. Uh, my name is Raynette Franco, and I am the founder and CEO of Compassion Works Medical. And what I do is I specialize in coverage for medical foods, enteral nutrition, and dietary supplements. I've been specializing in this area for over eight or ten years, I would say. I started off with Nutrition North America, before that was Applied Nutrition, and then opened up my own company to help everyone, not just their own products. Uh, from there, um, my mission is to provide of course, true medical food nutrition coverage and reimbursement support to clinics and people with all types of rare genetic diseases. A place you can trust, our way of working is unique and not mechanical or too corporate. We are natural and ourselves kind of professionals. We work on a personal level with all of our clients. We are the first responders, uh, responders for coverage support and we make people feel that they're not alone, that we usually hands on, hold their hands through the difficult task of medical food coverage. Medical food insurance coverage tips for all types of inherited metabolic diseases and rare genetic disorders in the USA. The complexity of the healthcare system can overwhelm even the savviest patient and or clinical professional. That is why Compassion Works Medical was created to hold hands with patients and alleviate the clinic's time to the difficult process of medical uh, food insurance coverage. Well, uh, there are several types of related comorbidities to um, HCU, and uh, we talked about this in the past, but this is what I've learned on the classical homocystinuria which requires a B6 vitamin, B12, form varies by patient, a folic acid, uh, something called cystadine, which is an oral solution. Um, you have then formula for their uh, dietary needs, including low-protein food diet, which is the classical homocystinaria. The co cobalamin defects usually requires the B12 um, hydrocobalamin injection form and the cystadine, uh, oral solution. Some may be prescribed a low protein diet and formulas, uh, formula, folate, or level cartonine, but it depends. And then you have the MTHFR, which is coming across my way a little bit more, uh, which consume more natural folate, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12, not folic acid, which is synthetic vitamin B9, a folate rich diet, and some clinics. Uh, may suggest a special diet. So this, all of this um, is expensive, and it can be covered under insurance in different ways. So my job is to help um, these people try to get uh, afford and stay on their diet pretty much. First thing you need to learn is insurance terminology. Without knowing the proper insurance terminology, understanding your insurance coverage for medical foods and to a formula can be confusing and frustrating. Let's start here. Every case is unique and different. Understanding your options and insurance terminology is essential to obtaining the coverage that you deserve. What is a medical food? You may hear these words often and could be confusing to the words formula or dietary supplements, which a lot of people that are not in the clinic world or in my field, they don't really get the grasp of what exactly is a medical food, but I usually say it's it's like a medication but in a different name because it's designed for a special disease and it's in a, a prescription format and it has an NDC format that, that is capable of billing under pharmacy benefits. Uh, medical foods are foods that are spe uh, specially formulated and processed as opposed to a naturally occurring foodstuff used in a natural state. For a patient who requires use of the products as a major component of a disease or condition specific dietary management and intended to be used under medical supervision. Formula is basically the same thing as a medical food, you may know this already, Janice, as they are made from the building blocks of foods. Dietary supplements are not generally designed for a certain disease, but are used in contribution to maintaining disease such as added vitamins. 
dietary supplements are sometimes added to patients' dietary management. What is enteral? Enteral is a medical term used for a feeding method. It can be either oral or tube feeding, hence enteral formula. Coverage for medical foods and dietary supplements. Overall, medical foods, dietary supplements, and enteral formula are all common words used for insurance coverage. Coverage for medical foods and dietary supplements are generally covered under medical benefits and supplied by a durable medical equipment, DME, distributor, by using the description of coverage, the description of coverage, not the product. However, medical foods are also covered under pharmacy benefits by product only, just a little tougher to maneuver insurance coverage. Now you have coverage for special injectable vitamins. Are you or your family member on injection vitamins, such as the hydrocobalamin MLB12? If yes, coverage for this special vitamin can be challenging. This special injectable vitamin may or may not be covered under pharmacy benefits. Some pharmacy benefits does not cover these products and consider this over-the-counter. To obtain coverage, it requires jumping through loops and holes. However, the health insurance benefits for the hydrocobalamin could be covered under your medical benefits. Since the skin is pinched or broken, such as with an injection, and the place of service is at your clinic. If your clinic could administer the vitamin and bill your insurance company, it would be the best affordable route because then it will be covered under medical benefits. You won't have to worry about uh, coverage falling under pharmacy and if it's not covered or not. Um, another way is if you can't go to your clinic, then you may want to visit the, uh, the one-minute clinics or the outpatient clinics or emergency uh, care clinic or something that's close to the patient, uh, the patient's home, so they could get their injections on a daily basis. Sometimes people have to get it uh, two or three times a day or once, just once a day, but if they can find a clinic or a one-minute clinic, urgent care, or to a pharmacy that has a, a way where they can accept those injections, then, then there could be a possibility of better affordability for the, uh, for the injectables. Coverage for special injectable vitamins. The insurance language under medical benefits for hydrocobalamin use HIPPIX code J3420. That's a description code. And for pharmacy benefits, it's under an NDC number, as you can see here, 00591. The place of service is at the office, usually injected at the physician's office under medical benefits. Again, it could be injected anywhere in a provider's office that could bill, that bills medical benefits. To start investigating coverage for your dietary management, it's recommended to start with your medical benefits first. A lot of people sometimes think when you get a prescription, we automatically think it's a pharmacy benefit, and that's natural. However, if you have a prescription for medical foods or dietary supplements, it's best to check with your medical benefits first when it comes to that aspect. Then you have insurance terminology. Medical food and dietary supplements coverage is, complete, is a complete foreign language to the health insurance industry. It really is. I have to educate uh, these benefit specialists throughout all different commercial insurance plans and sometimes even Medicaid of what, what this is actually for and what is it needed for and just plain what is it. So you have these service codes that gives a description. It's easier to describe what it is and the service when you're ready to bill for these um, medical foods, enteral forma or dietary supplements. Uh, you have these uh, B codes, and then you ha and you have an S code, and then you have that J code. These codes could be administered orally, tube feeding, or vitamin injection. Injections are usually done at the clinic and not at the home for proper coverage, as I had mentioned. And you have in and out of network benefits to help determine the most affordable way to obtain your dietary needs also known as participating and non-participating. Know the difference between prior authorization and predetermination. Prior authorization is required before coverage and predetermination is not required before coverage, but it helps avoid any future denials. 
especially if it's diagnosis driven or it's it is a medical food or dietary uh, supplement, it's always good to try to ask for a predetermination just in case uh, when submitting a claim it comes back saying it's not covered because it's an exclusion on the plan or any other reason, at least you'll have some type of reference number to help um, facilitate the claim in an easier way. Then you have diagnosis-driven plan. This is a plan that will only cover if the diagnosis code, such as your medical conditions, match the description of service. Your diagnosis code starts with a letter, like E. If it matches, then you are covered. Diagnosis-driven plans are easily mistaken as not covered. So if your benefit specialist mentions that it's not covered, ask if your plan is diagnosis-driven. Sometimes they could say, well, no, this is not covered unless you have an inborn error metabolism disease. But this person does have an inborn error metabolism disease. And in order for the benefit specialist to check to see if you're covered, you've got to give the diagnosis code for the inborn error metabolism disease and ask if that code is listed and if it's covered under that list of diagnosis. And if it is, then boom, it's covered. Other words are exclusions, out-of-pocket, state-mandated pans, uh, um, plans, deductible, fully insured, self-funded, allowed amount suppliers, and gap exceptions. It's important to understand your health plan's guidelines for medical food coverage by thoroughly reading your health plan summary of benefits to find out if your medical foods and dietary supplements are covered. Start by looking under durable medical equipment benefits and non-covered services, including exclusions. The key words to look out for are enteral, medical foods, nutrition, formula, supplements. What is a gap exception? Uh, have you ever heard of a gap exception? Janice? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Okay. <laughs> no, I have not. Okay. It's very important, and it's good to learn what exactly this is. A coverage gap exception is a waiver from a health care insurance company that allows a customer to receive medical services from an out-of-network provider at an in-network rate. Usually HMO or EPO plans do not have out-of-network benefits, but if you can't find an in-network provider to supply your medical foods, you can ask your insurance carrier for a gap exception. Also, your out-of-network supplier could request a gap exception to your insurance company directly. This way is easier. One of the best reasons for your waiver is that there aren't any other in-network providers within 100 miles of your residence that can supply your medical foods, enteral formula, or dietary supplement. Another is that you prefer to use the out-of-network provider because of a strong, long-lasting, and trusting previous relationship. And then there could be also emergency situations where you didn't know that um, you, your, your, let's say the hospital or the clinic is in network, but there's a particular doctor that needed to work on a case that's out of network but working in the hospital and not affiliated, then that's another reason you can ask for a waiver instead of accepting, oh, it's out of network, I'm responsible for a $20,000 bill. Any request is worth a shot. This also saves time for your out of network supplier as well as providing faster medical food service. Usually with medical food exclusion removals, usually your exclusions come for your, from your from employer's contracted plan with your insurance company. You will have to present a letter of medical necessity, which is also called LOMN abbreviation, and a medical food exclusion removal request letter to your human resource department for assistance. Why? because if you tell them what you have, it's going to go through one ear and out the other, and they're not really going to understand and try to tell you, no, we can't help you, go away. 
So when you present them this letter of medical necessity and a request to remove the exclusion on your insurance plan signed by your doctor, they have something in writing that they can actually read over and over and over and research any words that they need to to really understand the importance of the medical food to sustain their employees' health. So it's one of the biggest reasons why it's very important to have both, a letter of medical necessity and an exclusion removal request letter. For federal and state plans, exclusion removals are a bit complex. You should seek assistance from a certified insurance advocate um, because they have a different way of working as far as like unions and and other um, programs that they have that, uh, that requires someone that has experience in insurance terminology that could work with their insurance adjuster for better support. Now, this is for patients that have uh, Medicare or Medicaid. So uh, my Medicaid or Medicare plan does not cover my formula. Answer, first, do you have a straight plan from the state? If so, the best way to get covered under your plan would be to enroll into a managed Medicaid or managed Medicare plan. A supplement plan is not the same as a managed plan. Supplement plans follow the same rules with the straight state plans, and all they do is pick up the 20% that uh, you are responsible with your with your uh, Medicare plan, which is 80-20. And if it's Medicaid, the supplement plan also picks up anything that um, anything that the straight Medicaid won't. So it's easier just to go through a, a managed plan. The term managed care or managed health care is used to the United States to describe a variety of techniques intended to reduce the cost of providing health benefits and improve the quality of care. A managed Medicaid or Medicare plan is the middleman between your straight care plan and the managed care plan, such as Aetna, Humana, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield. They're the middleman, they're the manager, they make the decisions. It offers special needs and leniency towards medical food coverage than a straight plan. Most state Medicaid plans pushes to a managed care plan anyway, to be honest. Medicare is your choice, however, best choice. Number one, always never take no for an answer. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions, um, this pre again, this presentation is based on actual experiences. I believe there are no true experts with all the answers, so let's face the facts. Patients need an advocate, preferably with a medical food insurance background, professional individuals to be champions, to translate what's being told, ask the right questions, uh, the patients that don't know how to ask, and communicate upwards, downwards, and sidewards. So my goal today was to try to get as much people on the line and figure out what their issues are, learn from that, do some research, and try to uh, see where we, how further we can go as far as uh, insurance coverage for enteral nutrition. But I don't think we have en uh, enough people or patients on the line to ask those questions, Dunne. I've also put a message in the, the, the chat system there, there. They can post questions there if that's easier than calling, too. So. Okay. All right. So. If you have any questions, Janice, feel free to ask. If not, I believe this presentation will be posted on the HCU Network of America. And again, my, um, my purpose in the future, honestly, is to look into insurance coverage for cannabis and CBD, hopefully on the medical benefits portion so people can actually afford it. And, Raymet, can you share with people the best way to get in contact with you um, that yes. maybe not, might not be on the line but maybe listening later? Yes. So here are um, questions of support. To get in contact with me, you can simply call me at 973 code 832-4736. You can also reach me at email, which is raynett, R-A-E-N-E-T-T-E, -E -E, F like Frank, at CompassionWorksMRS.com. So it looks like Mrs. at the end, and it's CompassionWorksMRS.com. 
I, I can actually, I'll pose a couple of questions here for you, um, just because I have seen some things in the community lately. And so, um, oh, can you still hear me? Sorry. Uh, you faded out. I can hear you now. All right. So one of the questions I've seen a lot is um, the new tablets that um, take the place of formula. Uh, I see a lot of patients interested in those. And would those be considered medical food um, as formula is possibly? Um, yes. How is that handled? Um, yes. Would you because be very Well, first I want to make it clear that the HCU Easy Tabs are not a complete formula and will not replace a complete formula. It's actually, um, I'm not really familiar because I don't work for the company, but I know that it helps to, to get right to the source in the sense that it helps the phenylalanine in the system more. So the patients will need their extra vitamins and minerals, right? So mm -hmm. it, um, it really depends on the patient and how much does the patient need formula and the diagnosis of the levels, uh, the blood levels and all of that. And, and the, um, it's up to the uh, clinician, it's professional experience when it comes to di uh, the, um, dosing or giving the correct nutrition assessment. However, um, this is not a complete formula, but it is considered a medical food because it is designed for a certain disease, and that is for HCU. And it's presented mm -hmm. just like a medication. So when I see medical food, I look at medicine. I, in my own mind, I see it's medicine. But in actuality, it's not a drug, right? But um, mm -hmm. it is a medicine in which medicine, what medicine does is, is it helps to treat a symptom that you have. And in this case, that's what these medical foods do. And in that case, that's, that's, what, that's why uh, these easy tabs are considered a medical food. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of some other questions. Um, do some policies, I, I know some insurance policies, um, are there policies that are specific to, um, that say you can only work with one supplier, like say Canbrook Foods or Nutrition, are some of the plans that specific um, with what, what companies they will cover? Well, um, no only if a company or, or insurance plan requires a prior authorization. So there's so many ways of working around the prior authorization because it all depends on the insurance. So in this case, um, you have the insurance plan that requires a prior authorization, but they only take uh, one provider at a time under one particular codes that are being requested. So say, for instance, well, let's say there are several codes that match the same description, right? So mm -hmm. you have a formula code for pediatrics. You have a formula code for everybody, which is the five, B4157, and you have the B4162. Then you have a formula code, which is S9435, right? And then you have a B9998, which is just a miscellaneous enteral nutrition code supply code. So it depends on which code this provider is using. So if I am ABC company and I put in a request for code B4157, I get approved. But now the patient wants to go to another provider because this I don't carry this one particular product that this patient needs. But the other patient but this patient also needs vitamins in addition to their formula. So I don't carry that. So they need to go to another provider. So the other provider if they use the same B4157, no, then they can't then they then I then they can't use two providers at the same time. However, if they go to another provider and then they use the S9435 or the B4162 or any other code other than the B4157, then they should be able to get their approval and be happy to supply the patient. 
All right. I'm trying to think if there's any other situations um, that and I as can far think as of my right assistance, now. you know, as far as my assistance goes, when it comes to working with patients that are already working with their manufacturer's insurance navigator. So this is mm-hmm. how it works with, with Compassion Works. Compassion Works Medical helps with all kinds of medical food, enteral nutrition, and, and dietary supplements. We don't work for one particular company to help make money and only help those for their products. We help for everyone's products, Nutritia, Vitaflow, Mead Johnson, Solus Nutrition, Abbott, whatever. Wherever the formula comes from, we're going to help you get covered for it regardless. Um, I know that there are a lot of these manufacturers that do appreciate my services because at the same time, they're getting they're getting um, uh, re- uh, they're getting paid for their product through insurance companies, and the patient gets their product, and everyone is happy. Then you have other um, suppliers or uh, manufacturers that have their insurance navigator and says, "Well, um, we can't work with someone else because they're a third party or because we're already working on your case." But in reality, if the person is uh, helping a patient at a a medical food manufacturing company and they're not getting anywhere, then it's okay to ask uh, just to let them know and say, thank you very much for your support, but I'm going to, um, I just, you know, I I have someone else that's ready to help me and still using the same product and still having it covered and a win-win situation all around. So nobody's losing either way. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that is really great advice because I think sometimes some of those companies that have their own customer service departments that have their own insurance navigators, they're probably very overwhelmed, as I'm sure you are. But um, I can imagine their caseloads as well. And sometimes a fresh set of eyes and a fresh set of ears um, and just a fresh mind might sometimes be able to process things a little bit easier um, especially if they've been trying to work on the same case for a while and sometimes having a different person, maybe you, um, take a look, might move things along even easier. So, right, um, and help remove frustrations. Yes, exactly, because mm-hmm. no patient needs to be frustrated getting what they need to be healthy. So, Not well, Raina, I don't think there's any more questions um, okay. from those that were attending the call. So I thank you very much for your time this evening. I will get this um, uploaded this evening. And then if anyone has questions, there's Renette's contact information on the screen. You can also reach out to us at info at hcunetworkamerica.org if you have any questions about the organization. Thank you very much and have a good evening.